we've done our first introductions for those who are listening into the recording. So welcome, thanks for listening. Um, July Masterclass. Um, we've skipped past our morning agenda and we've jumped straight into Chantel. If Chantel doesn't know something about social media, it's not worth knowing. Um, so um, she is an absolute gun when it comes to um, understanding social media. Um, it's an oxymoron to some of us sometimes, um, but a very powerful tool whether you're in a trade or not. Um, it's applicable for all businesses. So uh, I'm looking forward to learning lots about the world that I don't know enough about. Um, and as I said, uh, what Chantel doesn't tell me tonight, I don't need to research because it's not worth knowing. So Chantel, um, over to you. Um, we have some extended time. So uh, really looking forward to this. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on today. To be here today, it is the boys club and I love that. I work with so many men, but I also work with a lot of tradies' wives. Um, so I'm looking forward to sharing with you uh, today. I'm going to pull up my PowerPoint presentation because that kind of keeps me on track because everyone who knows me knows I tend to give, like go overboard with what I, with what I deliver. Uh, if you have a question and like it is imperative that you know that answer oh, because... Yeah. You can't move. You cannot no, go any video. further without. I'm not on video. Uh, we'll just just check everyone is muted, um, just for the recording as well. Um, so, if um, if it's imperative that you know the answer right then and then, Italian rules. Okay, unmute yourself and ask the question. Like if you have to know the answer to something right then and there. However, if it's if it can wait and it's not a life and death situation. Either do one of two things. Put it in the chat box um, if you've got short-term memory <laughs> um, uh, or just write it down on a piece of paper and keep it till the end because I'm happy to answer your questions for you. So I will take you to, and I'm, I'm sure you can all see that, right? You can all see that. Thumbs up. All right, cool. So how, today I want to talk to you about how to make sales from your socials, because this is what everyone wants to know. When I uh, first moved from South Africa to Australia, everyone said to me, be more visible, give it away for free. And all that did was leave me incredibly ex exhausted online and without money, okay? And I actually had to make money. And I'll explain why when I tell my story. So for me, I'm not just about visibility. I'm not about engagement. I'm certainly not gonna go and tell you to twerk on TikTok to get customers. Um, but I am going to show you how to make some sales from your socials. So I don't know if this is you, but this is me. I want a rewarding life. I want that off and online. And I don't, don't want to spend, on so, spend my life on social media. And I want whatever I do online to be meaningful, meaning that whatever I do, it gets me clients. Um, and I want to make sure that I can continue to get clients on repeat, continually using social media. And I actually hate technological stuff. I hate being online. It's really, really funny. A lot of people think, well, how can you be an online marketing strategist? You must spend your life online. I'm going, no, I spend my life trying not to be online um, because I actually like to play. I always say I'm a player. Okay. And I want to make money and I still want to go on holidays because holidays are really important for me. <clears throat> and if you, uh, a friend of mine on my personal Facebook page, you'll see, I do do a lot of holidaying. Okay, let's see. So I'm Chantelle Girardi, and I do scrub up occasionally, as you can see on the left-hand side, just not at this time in the night on a cold winter's night. So I am an award-winning Facebook strategist and social media coach. Uh, and I honestly believe that the only BS you need in your online marketing is a business strategy. You can see I'm a bit cheeky. Here are those three things that I spoke about earlier, three things that I'm absolutely um, passionate about as a marketer. Um, and that is, developing your skills in marketing your business so that you yourself have control over your marketing and you can generate clients. Number two is strategies, making sure that you don't just go on, on and get overwhelmed and just shoot things out everywhere and just hope something's going to work, but you actually have strategies in place. And the third one is systems, because if we can automate some of those systems and processes, well, guess what? You can do what I did last week and go away camping to Mooney Creek and come back and still have clients and leads coming in. Um, and haven't said this yet, I do it all without paying for advertising. 
Okay, some of you are going, what? No way, Chantel. 100% no advertising. I do not do any paid advertising. The clients that I work with, probably around 90%, do not do any advertising. All the results they are getting from these three are from these three things: skills, strategies, and systems. So let's start in the very beginning. These are my kids that are upstairs now, and they're probably about four times that size now. Um, but when I moved here in 2008, I moved from South Africa to Australia. In South Africa, paid off cars, paid off houses, everyone knew me, um, and three kids under the age of five. I'm non-techy, non I'm hyperactive. No one knows me when I moved to Australia. I have no money. I'm actually paying my way into the country and I had no Centrelink or government support. And the industry I was in um, was a personal training industry saturated here on the Gold Coast, right? Personal trainer on every corner. And I needed to make money because my husband at the time was then made redundant, not once, but twice, okay? No Centrelink, made redundant twice, they're going to send us back. And we've already spent so much money here. I was certainly stressed, fearful, hopeless, scared, and a whole bunch of other swear words I won't mention. But determination actually prevailed. I taught myself social media without paid advertising because I honestly didn't have the money to outsource or pay for advertising. And I did it while the kids played or slept. I can also tell you I did a whole bunch of wrong things like being spammy. Um, but I certainly learned what the wrong and right things are to do online. I built my trust in my online brand and I became known as an industry leader here on the Gold Coast. And what I realized was that I could connect with the right audiences and get the right customers. And when I talk about right customers, I'm talking about paying customers. I'm not talking about time wasters. And I created certainty in my customer generation by developing my confidence, capabilities, and gaining clarity. And these are three other things that I'm incredibly passionate about. You can see I like those little, all the S's, all the C's. I've got a whole bunch of P's as well. A lot of F words too. Um, but I absolutely are passionate about confidence, capabilities, and clarity when it comes to your marketing. Because certainty is really important. When you've got no money to feed the kids, I had no, I, I had to have it work. If it didn't work, the kids didn't eat. It was as simple as that. So here they are now, as I said, a lot bigger. There's me, uh, my twin daughters. I think they're still in the same place, Erin uh, and Jordan. They're now 17 and a half years old. My youngest daughter, Hannah, she's 14 and a half. Uh, that's Ziggy, foster dog on the left. Marlo, the little one on the right. Um, so as a busy mom, very busy with children, those who've got teenage kids or smaller kids, I love the outdoors. I love spending time with the dogs and the kids. Um, and I do not like spending time online. So today I'm going to do something incredible. I'm going to show you four things that are going to make the biggest difference to your social media. And then I'm going to show you the three essential things that you've got to get right if you actually want to make um, sales from your socials. So who wants that? Me, 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 me. Everyone jumping up and down. Okay, so here's the thing. After going and doing that myself, after growing and scaling a six-figure business with no tech experience, no marketing budget, not knowing anybody, just using social media, not paying for ads at all, I won a whole bunch of awards, which I still can't kind of believe because it's still a little old me over here and I still don't really class myself as a marketer. Um, but all these awards and all these features were basically the results that I would get was getting just from simply doing simple marketing things. I mean, this is the irony. It's so simple. Um, it's almost unbelievable. I did go on to get a diploma in social media a couple of years back, and I'm grateful I learned how to do it first before I did the diploma because also would have confused the heck out of me. But I am also an associate member of the Master Plumbers Association. Um, I have mentored and been around the country helping the Master Plumbers Association and many of the wives get a handle and grow their businesses uh, without paying for advertising using social media. Um, and I am also heavily involved in the Trady Wives Facebook group as well. Okay, so here are the fundamentals. So uh, pen and paper, have it ready. If you're anything like me, you like to just jot down notes or even power words so that at the end of today, you can go and you can take away those power words and action them. Because listening to me, I mean, it's going to be entertaining because I, I, I figure I'm quite entertaining. But at the end of the day, what I want you to do is I want you to take what I'm teaching and I want you to implement something. 
So if anything stands out, write those power words down and action those um, tomorrow. So number one, before you do anything, before you even go onto social media, you have to consider this. How do you personally want to be seen online? Some of you maybe don't want to be the face of your business. Maybe you've got some more children. You don't want them to be seen. Um, you know, how's your personal branding and your privacy going to be online? I think it's important for business owners to establish that before they even go to social media so that they can do things to protect themselves. Because I believe that most people aren't online because they simply don't know what people see or don't see. Okay, so when you understand your privacy settings and you understand how public or private you want to be and you understand the risks that are involved with your children. So, for example, small children, you should never post them in school uniform, never post the registration license of your vehicle, never post the um, the number of your house. And well, there's another one. Uh, never check in. Please never check in at your house. Never, ever check in at your house. Um, and even on social media, even if you work from home, I don't like you putting your physical address um, into Facebook. So just a couple of safety things. But when you understand those things, it certainly can make you feel a little bit more confident in, in actually going online and doing things. So number two is, you have to know who your ideal uh, client is and you've got to know them intimately, okay? You've got to know their likes, their needs, their wants, their frustrations. So you know how to talk to them and you know how to solve their problems. Um, you basically have to know how to make them happy, okay? And when you go, everyone's my client, you'll catch no one. But when you know specifically the type of clients you want to work with and you have sat down and considered how you can communicate with those people online, you can build no like, and trust. And people will choose you based on you, not on price. Cannot say that enough. They will not choose price over you if they like you, okay? It is a bit of a popularity contest. Number three is stalk your competitors. So go online, stalk their websites, stalk their socials. Um, I've actually got a checklist. So if anyone wants that checklist, uh, if you can put your email address in the chat box at the end of this, hopefully I can download that and I'll send that to you. I've got a couple of checklists I'm happy to send you. But one of them is when you stalk your competitors and you look at what reviews they've got, the type of social content they put in, where are they sending people to? What is their call to action? Do they have a lead magnet? What are their prices? How do they communicate their offerings? We do this not so that we can copy them. We do this so that we can differentiate ourselves from them online. Marketing is not about what you do that everyone else is doing. It is about what you do that is different from what everyone else is doing. Okay. And I've actually worked with quite a few Hira Hubby franchises. So even though I work with Hira Hubby franchises and I've worked with um, the husband and wife in one and the husband in another, the strategy is going to be completely different because you, it's, it's about relationships with people. And it's about that personal branding. Uh, stalking your competitors, as I said, incredibly important that you know how to differentiate yourself and show your point of difference over everyone else. I've had a mortgage broker get customers just because she has a little Maltese poodle sitting on her lap when she does Zoom. She does mortgage broker Zoom consults. So all the little old ladies with all the little Maltese poodles all go to her because they all want to sit. Zoom to Zoom and have Maltese poodles on their lap. So that is part of her personal branding and it gets her customers. So number D is branding consistency. Now, straight away, you go, ah, oh, my colors, my fonts, my logos. I'm going to tell you that it's not. Uh, for me, it's more about your name. And it's more about the words that come out of your mouth. So the tone, the key messaging, the consistent things that you talk about or say online, then you become memorable like McDonald's. So key messaging. So it's important to work out what are your key messages and consistently repeat that in your online marketing. So number E is you have to have a strategy. And I am going to go more into it a little bit later. But a strategy basically is what is your overall intention? So if your overall intention is to get more customers, well, what are who are those customers? And what is, this, what is their spend with you? Where do they hang out online? How am I going to communicate to them? How am I going to get them to book a call or to buy something from me? It becomes a customer journey. So that strategy, that whole customer mapping and journey, it's important to map it out. Um, and it's incredibly important that you get them off social media as quickly as possible. So true story. I learned this on Tinder. Um, where I met my partner six and a half years ago. True story, I've written a blog on it. 
Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff I learned from Tinder. And one of the things is if you're messaging um, like a person backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, they're talking to multiple people and they're still looking at multiple people like um, online, you know, they'd be going to Google. So if you can get them off and you can get them to a call, if you can go, to, go on a date with them as soon as possible, you're a lot closer to closing the deal. Okay, so get them off social media as quickly as possible. Do not listen to anyone who says to you, oh, message them back and you message them back. It's not. If Qualify them and then speak to them. Get them off social media. So F is R and R's and it's not rest and relaxation. It's about reviewing and responding. You need to review what you do weekly. So for me, I have a Friday review session. I go in and I review every aspect of my business. I go look at my social media. I go look at my posts. I go, what is working? What is not working? And I reflect and I go a couple of R's here and I reflect and I go, what do I need to change or what worked that I need to um, consider redoing? Uh, responding. Okay, again, it's like, it's like dating. If you sat down and you went on a first date and you just went, me, 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 you just wouldn't get a second date, right? So it's really important that when people do do social media and they comment or they engage or they say something, you just take time every day. And I actually just call this a toilet activity, but you just take the time every single day just to go and respond, you know, with a thumbs up, or that's great, Sharon, or thanks for the share, Mary, or it was great to see you the other day, Bob. But it is important to do that because it is a relationship, another R word. It's a two-way conversation. Um, a couple of other R's. You do need to know how to receive referrals online. And there's a massive strategy around that um, on how you can actually receive referrals and also give referrals online and recommendations and getting people to leave your reviews. It is also incredibly important that you understand how to protect your reputation. So, for example, if someone was to troll you online, or write a bad review or do something, what is your, rep your reputation management plan and how are you going to quickly resolve that issue? So G, I've, I've spoken about this briefly, but get them the hell of social media as quickly as possible. Get them to the next logical step for them, not for you. So many people are shoving people into messenger bots and the messenger bot is clunky and they're not getting any inquiries because some people can't be bothered to sit there and go through the whole process. I can tell you right now that the contact us form on your website is probably one of the most underutilized, powerful things that you have because you don't just need their first name, their first, I think, what does it normally say? First name, email, maybe a mobile and message. You can actually put some qualifying questions in there, which can help qualify your clients and actually get them one step closer to committing and booking in and paying, actually. You can take payment there too. Um, and the last one is having a professional profile, meaning that your personal profile, you know, if you're getting up to mischief on the weekends, making sure that you're fully aware of what is public or what is private and who is seeing what, because your personal profile, a lot of people don't realize this, but your personal profile is private but you can make certain parts public so you can make all your business stuff public and keep all your personal stuff private um, but it's important that you know what's public or private so what people see or don't see because you need to protect your online reputation i remember working with a pest control company um, and it was run by or it is run by a whole bunch of new zealanders and they're a whole bunch of big maori fellas okay um and a whole bunch of Maori fillers and the, and the wife came to me and said, you know what, when they do advertising around it, everyone gets a bit nervous because these big Maori fellas are coming to this little retired lady's house now to do a pest control thing. So I said, well, tell me about these big Maori fellas. Oh, no, you know, this one's involved in Rotary and this one over here is involved in, uh, you know, uh, the AFL and this one over here is a family man. He's been married for 20 years and, you know, he's got five kids. And I said, well, great. Well, let's start posting on your social media about these people and show them in a friendly, normal environment because it's social media, right? It's social. And straight away, we built that know, like and trust just by showing the professionalism of those people online and just having that know, like, and trust consistency on there. Because at the end of the day, people are going to stalk you and they are going to go on and they're going to check you out first and go, who's this person I'm booking in to come to my house? Or who's this person uh, I'm booking in? And, you know, and if you look dodgy, if you look dodgy, or if you come across even as dodgy, um, they're not going to choose you. They'll choose someone else. And at the end of the day, social media comes down to, Whoever does social media best gets the customer. That's the truth. Whoever does social media best online will get the customer. It's as simple as that. 
Um, so really, really important. A good thing to do is go stalk yourself. So choose Bob, just go into each of the social media platforms, put your name in, put your name into Google, see what comes up. You want to make sure that, um, you know, you're coming up good. Uh, and the other thing that you can do as well, stalk your business name as well. You'll be quite surprised to see that many other businesses may have, in fact, your, your, the same name as you, which means it's going to be really uh, important for you to differentiate yourself from someone else through the little profile picture, as well as through the username and tag because else in essence, they could be tagging or referring someone else rather than your business. I'll give you an idea, uh, an example of that. There's a lady who, uh, called Think, Think Love Live. She creates sustainable swimwear. So it's made from recyclable plastic. There was a uh, alternative punk rock band called Think Love Lift and Live. And they did um, these like hardcore sweary, you know, obscene sort of uh, clothing and everyone was tagging Think Love Live and they were tagging this other brand, not her, um, because she had a different URL. So really, really important. You go in, you look at your usernames, you look at your business names and you make sure if someone else does have your name, make sure you differentiate it. And then professionally that whatever your Facebook name is, your Instagram name is, your website name is, there is consistency across all platforms. Uh, really important. So number two, remember I did say to you there were, I think, four things initially to go through. So that we're only on number two. So thanks for the extra time. Number two, it's social media. This one does go a bit quicker. Um, and the good thing about social media and probably the only reason why I succeeded as a marketer without being a marketer was because it's social. So when you start looking at it as about as a two-way conversation and a relationship with people, you don't mind doing it so much, especially when you're helping more people. So social media is social, which means keep it social. There shouldn't, there, you shouldn't be overly salesy. Gone are the old days of buy me, buy me, buy me, click here, buy me. Um, and it sounds a bit funny, but I, this is honestly what I always talk about is that there has to be a little bit of a foreplay, well, uh, quite a bit of foreplay before the happy ending. So it's really, really important that you just don't go straight in for the sales. Okay. There needs to be a good mix between social and salesy. So number three is you have to share success stories. So people want, don't just want to hear about how good you are. They need to see what you've done for other people. You need to share statistics because a lot of people are left-brained. So left-brained people need statistics to make them believe that they should spend money on you. So you need to share statistics around that support people using your services. You need to show your services. But when we talk about showing your services, you need to talk about the outcomes of the service outcomes of the service. So how are they feeling right now before the service and how will they feel after the service? That is how you communicate your service or your offering online. Um, and then you also have to share other people's content. So you need to engage and also share uh, not only your own content, but other people uh, like-minded or affiliates or partners or collaborators share their content as well. So number four is you want to offer your potential customers solutions. So you may do this obviously through top tips as well and say, hey, if you're struggling with, I don't know, changing a door handle, uh, this is how you can change a door handle. Um, but if you're struggling with that door handle and you don't have the tools that I've just listed here, hey, don't forget, I'm from Hara Hubby and I, I can come do that for you. Okay, so offer your potential customers solutions. Uh, showing social proof. So again, uh, I don't know. Mary was like this, you know, she was really struggling with, I don't know, a deck outside, the dog's paws keep slipping through the deck the whole time. Uh, you know, she was being divorced for the last 20 years, her husband died, uh, or died or divorced, whatever the story is. And now she's got a deck, the dog's happy, it's going across the floor, and it's absolutely over the moon, thanks to Hara Hubby. So social proof, and then a little testimonial from, from Mary going, thank you so much. That was amazing. Um, you're amazing. So another thing to remember is it's not selling if you're serving. So if you can remember that, it'll just take that salesiness out of it and will just help you to be a little bit more coming from a more servitude kind of thing. Um, and you don't have to give it all away for free. So, for example, if you're sharing how to change a door handle, um, I would list all the tools that they need to do it because as soon as they see all the tools that they need to do it they probably just get you to do it anyway and then if it's actually takes about 10 steps I'd give them about three so <laughs> you only give them a little bit you don't give them everything um, but because you obviously still need them to use you so I always say give them the what to do don't give them the how to do it
And believe it or not, that's exactly what I'm doing with all of you tonight. Um, so the third thing over here is the algorithm, okay? The algorithm is free and it's awesome. And you can get free results if you understand how the algorithm works. So everyone freaks out about the algorithm and goes, um, oh my gosh, the algorithm, it's not working anymore. You must pay for ads. I can tell you right now that the people who say that are the people, <laughs> are the people who are Facebook and Instagram and the ones that make money for ads from ads, or they are the people that are into paid advertising who will tell you that. But if you go online and you actually ask people, a whole bunch of people who do advertising will tell you they spend thousands and got absolutely nothing. And many will tell you that just by doing these fundamentals, they actually get results organically online. Um, I was working with a pest control company today and they've got their Google My Business and their Facebook are their two most highest performing lead generators and they do not pay for any advertising at all. Uh, but they have been working with me for the last two years. So the algorithm is basically a prediction. Whatever you put into your socials and your personal profile, as well as your business page, um, whenever you put in, the algorithm looks at and goes, based on what you're putting in, who else is interested in that? So when you show interest in, um, say, hi, Rahabi, you're showing interest in renovators, okay? People who are renovating. Um, and you're showing interest in them renovating and fixing things and doing things, then it'll go, well, you're talking about, you know, tips on how to renovate and do things. These people over here, you're showing interest in renovators. I'm going to start putting you in front of more people who are doing renovations right now. And that's how the algorithm works. It's really as simple as that. And it's kind of like dating apps as well. It goes, well, you like sunset walks on the beach and uh, AFL, and you're an early morning riser and you like to go to the beach and you love playing AFL, you two should date. And the algorithm will say, you guys might like each other. And that's exactly how algorithm works. So the reason I share this with you, um, and you know, there, it's more in depth there, but the reason I share this with you is that when they ask you, the socials ask you to fill in your details. It's not for you. They're not trying to really help you. It's actually for them. They need you to fill in your about section. They need you to fill in your services. They need you to fill in your, um, your location. They need you to fill in all these different things that they ask you to do. And I bet when all of you set up your profiles, you went, I'll do that tomorrow. And tomorrow never came. And it's now nine years later. Okay, guaranteed, go check your about sections. But the words that you are putting into those slots is training the algorithm in, into what should show, show you or bring people to that page. Now, if you don't use that page, it just goes away. The algorithm just dies. And to reactivate that algorithm is really difficult. Um, it, it comes down to two things. One is attraction marketing, meaning that you have to set up your page and put the right content onto your socials, okay? So, and you've got to be consistent in that. So that's attraction marketing because the right people will be attracted to that content and that info, um, especially if you're location-based, that's really important because if you're constantly putting in your location, eventually only those that location will start being drawn towards you. So really important. But the second part of it, and a lot of people don't realize this, it's a second strategy, and that is prospecting, meaning on social media, you've now got to go out to your ideal customers. I call it peacocking. You've got to go and you've got to talk and engage with not only your ideal clients, but referral partners who are people who have your clients but aren't in competition with you. Super important. It's a two-sided strategy. And prospecting, you've got to be doing at least once a week. Depends how many clients you want, really. I recommend doing it daily. So number four, how do you get a yes? It's all about getting a yes, okay? It's like, how are they going to choose you over everyone else? Well, basically, when someone lands on you, okay, when the algorithm connects you or when somebody tags you and suddenly you end up on someone's feed, you've got to get a yes from them. Now, in order to get a yes, there's a couple of boxes you've got to tick. Number one, that's social proof. You can't just talk about how good you are. They need to see it from other people. Number two, you have to have credibility. They have done research around this. And even though most sort of tradies are, should be licensed and registered, those who say they're licensed and registered get more customers than, than those who don't have it on their social media. Really cool. Number three, 
you do have to post trending seasonal relevant stuff, right? So tomorrow I've got to do the Queensland state of origin thing, you know, like it's a thing I'm going to have to do tomorrow because it just helps you to stay on top of the, on top of the feeds. Number four, you have to add value in your expertise. So again, it comes down to not just selling the whole time, but also adding tips. Number five is you have to develop a nurture relationship. So you're not going to get a yes first time. You're just not. People are scrolling and they're scrolling and they're scrolling and you're not the only person that they see. And uh, in the last two years, impulse buying has drastically reduced because people have now cottoned on to the idea that just when they see something, they don't have to pay in book straight away. They can now go to Google and they can price compare and research online and they can look for a better deal. So you have got to develop that relationship so that you become memorable so that when they then find you in Google, because you're doing the right thing in Google, my business, um, they'll go, oh, I saw you online. I saw you on Google, my business. <laughs> a lot of them will go, oh, that's lucky, but it's not. You've trained the algorithm in order to come up in front of them. So it's about developing that relationship and expecting it's not going to be the, on the first time. I think it's something like 17 touches you have to have now before you get a yes. So number six is a desirable offer. So just giving an example based on today, um, we, I'm working with a pest control business uh, this afternoon, spent a couple of hours with them working out lead magnets. Um, and I said to them, you know, like, what's what's your offer right now? Like, what's your biggest offer? And they went, oh, termite, termite and pest control. I went, oh, really? I said, aren't rodents around right now? Because it's winter, like there's rodents. Oh, yeah, actually, we're doing a lot of rodents. I went, right. So why don't you do a triple package where you, when last did you do your termite inspection? Because you should do that annually. You haven't done your pest control, which you haven't done for the last year or two. And rodents are rampant right now breeding. So I'm going to offer you this try package and we're going to do this as a desirable offer because we only have to come to your house once, do things three times, and I'm going to give you 15% off. So desirable offers means it is desired by the customer. It's desired by the customer. Uh Number seven is you and your business backstory. So again, this is really important and um, really important because you do have to actually factor in your social media. Now, you don't have to factor your face if you don't want to, um, and you don't have to factor your body, like if you, <laughs> if you don't want to factor your body either. There are simple ways to do it, like pictures of your dog, pictures of the sunset. You know, they, see, they tend to do well online, but there needs to be a feeling of you, you talking about something, you enjoying you know attending this masterclass tonight and developing your business it is social media so you do need to factor in your social media and you do need to include type content around what you're doing um you know if you're involved in charity then i'm going to a charity thing if i'm networking i'm networking if you've got three kids and you want you know your youngest kids just learn how to to um if your youngest kids just learned how to um uh, walk, then say, you know, congrats, my youngest kid just learned how to walk. So a lot of people, when it comes to their business pages, they do everything business-like and they take themselves out and they wonder why it doesn't work. And then many people on their personal profiles post everything about their personal stuff and never mention about their business stuff. So the people on their personal profile who are their actual friends actually forget what they do. And they go to Google and they look elsewhere. And that's a true story. So number eight is you need to also create collaborations, joint ventures, cheerleaders and referral partners online. So for example, if I see a tradie online and they say that they're struggling with, um, and they say that they're struggling with um, uh, admin, I'm just going to tag admins the answer. And if admin the answer sees that there are people online, they're struggling with social media, he's going to tag me online. So we're now referring each other online and we're contrib contributing towards each other content. We're also keeping an eye for each other and supporting each other, which is pretty cool. And it's important to nurture those relationships online. Um, I call them cheerleaders and um, you do need to nurture, nurture those relationships too. Number nine is um, solve a problem with your services. And I have spoken about that already, but I cannot say it enough. It needs to be outcome focused for the customer what's in it for them and using emotion is really good because it's more around the emotion so let, let's use that door handle as an example and i'm just winging it and i do get a bit stale as the night gets on um but with a door handle um say there's an elderly lady and she's trying to replace a door handle okay the door handles into a garage and you go i i help people change their door handles or you go you know perhaps there's some elderly folk out there 
and one of the door handles broken and you don't have the tools to be doing it right now and you're concerned about your security and safety at the moment, know that I'm available this week in this area and I'm more than happy to come around um, and, um, and change the door handle for you. Um, and I also have over, you know, uh, over 20 online reviews, so I'm all safe. Okay, you've now gone and you've solved a problem with your services, but it's outcome focused for the person. Number 10 is pitch perfect, meaning just like we did tonight when everybody pitches and kind of introduces themselves online in less in about three sentences, you have got to be able to communicate what you do to a stranger when you are pitching online. So if someone in a group goes, I'm looking for a door handle to be um, replaced. You have got three sentences and no more than three sentences to convince that person that they should use you over anyone else. So getting that pitch right is incredibly important. It's really cool. You can just copy paste a whole bunch of them. So every time you do one, I just copy paste them. So now literally when I see them online, I just copy paste and go, that pitch will go well with that one. That pitch will go well with that one. Of course, please make sure that you also personalize them a bit. All right, so this is number five, your banners and your bios. So your banners and your bios, banners are the little shop front graphic, like on LinkedIn, Facebook. Your bios is like an Instagram, the bios and also the about section. And you've got three seconds to get a yes from a str stranger. So if somebody previews your profile or clicks into your profile, within three seconds, they are going to scroll up or they're going to click into it and view the page further. Now, the thing that keeps them there, and this strengthens the algorithm heavily, 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 because other people are going, I'm not interested in you. So it's kind of like Tinder again. It's like swipe left, you're out, and you'll never see that person again on Tinder. They'll never pop up, pop up again. And it's kind of like that with, ban with banners. And your bios are actually keyword searchable, meaning that the exact words that your customers are looking for needs to be the words inside your bio because they it'll match them that's how the algorithm works so your banners and bios it should feel like you it should have your branding and your logo um it should have your physical location if you've got one that's really important um your your next port of call so your next call of action what do you want them to do do you want them to call do you want them to email do you want them to go to the website what do you want them to do that's really important you need to have a mission statement or a promise as well so what is the promise that you make or mission statement? And that should be heavily around your point of difference. Include who you specifically like to work for and the problem that you, you solve. Again, that niche or point of difference. It should have a person or a face. Again, when we did softer uh, pictures of the Maori fellas with their families and it was all softer and more sort of personable, um, it just changed the, um, it, it changed the booking rate for, for that business. Um, and it should also have your credentials or qualifications. So any credentials, years experience, anything else, make sure that you have those, um, make sure that you have those on there as well. So these are just examples of before, before and after. And I do have a checklist as well. So again, if you do want me to email this through to you, I don't know, either Greg can just send me the emails and I'll send you these checklists. But I do have a checklist for this. This is a before. So if you imagine you're a stranger, what does this person do? Okay. And then after the checklist, can you see how it effectively communicates and you can certainly see what, what is more compelling? All right. And I've got another example. So here's Beck. Okay, Beck does cleanses. That's great. That's her banner beforehand and after. She's the alternative gut and hormone nutritionist. Health and energy upgrades for busy and tired women seeking natural solutions to resolve gut weight issues and menopausal related issues. So there's that mission statement. Okay. And uh, next contact, the next call, call to action is to the website. All right. So three things, three things, as I said, this is the difference now. So those were kind of all fundamentals. They're incredibly important. But if you want to make sales from your socials, these are some, three of the biggest things that needs to happen. And I cannot say this enough. Everyone knows I'm all about this S word, which is strategy. Um, because as I said, you cannot wing it. You cannot cross your finger. You cannot just go and spit stuff out and hope something's going to stick. You have to have a strategy. So again, you've got to stalk yourself. You've got to do a competitor's analysis. You've got to look at where previous clients have come from and who they are 
and you've got to look at prospective clients and you've got to consider how you're going to communicate to them. Then you need to brain dump all your points of differences and your income opportunities. So for example, I work for a non-alcoholic um, beverage company. The non-alcoholic beverage company, if they sell uh, a six pack and by the time they've actually walked, you know, gone to the post office and posted off their six pack, it, they really don't make a lot of money. So really what they need to be doing is selling a 12 pack. So again, it comes down to income opportunities and looking at that desirable offer, meaning it's desirable to you, but it is also de desirable to the customer. Then you have to look at how you can monetize that offer um, and how you can automate the processes of doing that. Um, and we usually do that through lead magnets. So generating, uh, having a, an opt-in so that if people aren't ready to use your service right now, they will download a valuable resource. You will instill no like, and trust with them. They will then go into an email nurture sequence and where you can nurture them into buying from you. Because remember those touch points? They need those touch points before they buy. And also you can only sell a business that has an email list. The, the value of your business is the value of your email list. If you don't have a valuable email list or assets, assets are actually your email list as well as all your followers on your social profiles. So number four is that's when you then go forth and get them. And that is uh, taking action and making sure that you review your strategy along the way and that you see it through. If a strategy doesn't work, guess what? You don't throw the strategy away. You find where in the strategy it's not working and you fix that part only. Um, and go and get paying clients. So here's the thing. I spoke to another client this morning uh, and she said to me, oh yeah, I got like 17,000 like hits on this one post of my husband, you know, crawling around in the dirt with a flashlight looking for termites. And I said, yeah, that's great. It's a good personable image. It's absolutely great. How many customers did you get? And she was like, oh, what do you mean? I said, well, how many customers? How many customers? Go look. Did your page at least grow? Did you get more inquiries through the website, through the page? Like that's the true value of whether or not social media is actually getting you sales. So you will get sales if you have got the right offer to the right audience at the right price delivered now or later. Now, the reason I say now or later is because people need 17 touch points before they actually buy from you, which means it's not a no, it's just a no for right now. So how can we nurture those relationships? And honestly, it's both through social media and going through all the previous things we discussed, but it is also about keeping them in your email list so that you can continue to nurture them there. Um, and here's just some of the ways that you can also display some success stories that you have. So you can take screenshots of your Google My Business, screenshots of your Facebook testimonials as well. Or if a client messages you and says to you, um, oh, that was fantastic, you know, um, you know, I'm getting, you know, 17 and a half percent of my clients now from Facebook after working with you. Um, I take a screenshot of those messages and you can add them to your website and you can use them in your socials as well. Now, remembering that these are just some examples here as well. Um, and you can see over here, we're not just talking about little money. We're talking about big money as well. So, you know, jobs, $2,000, $8,000 jobs, um, all from using social media without paying for ads. So Chantel, Chantel, we've got about eight minutes so we can squeeze some Q&A in. Yep, perfect, because we're on the last two. So thank you so much. Um, so we're on number two. So I always say this, right? If you want to be a successful business owner, you need to own your business. Too many people are trying to outsource it, trying to give away, like get rid of some of the stuff they don't like doing when it's actually really easy to do. Okay. Now the good news is, is you don't need to know everything. You only need to know how to run your business and your client generation. That's all you need to do is know how to do yours. Not everyone else's, just yours. Um, and you'll actually stop wasting time when you do things properly. So here's the thing. It's actually a huge time saver when you have someone hold your hand and show you how to do it. As I said, you need to own your business and you need to understand how things work. And the reason I say this is because when you do outsource or you do hand things over to a marketing company, you go, here we go. And one of two things happens. You either outsource to monkeys uh, because you're paying peanuts um, and you get absolutely nothing. Or number two, you pay a huge amount of money uh, and that company, because they've got a good sales team, basically have got a good sales team, but not a good marketing team and they screw you. And because you don't actually have the first one, which is a strategy, 
and you don't have the skills to understand what they're doing, you cannot oversee what they're doing. So you can get taken for a ride. And some of you are thinking, I can see it already. You're going, oh my gosh, until this has happened to me a few times. And I know, because I'm literally saying what happens to a lot of clients when they come to me. So when we talk about the F word, we talk about funnels, but really I like to use the word customer journeys. It's just customer journeys. It's like, what is the logical thing that your customer is going to do? And that's all you have to think about, okay? And have the skill of understanding who your customer is, how you can talk to them and go, what is the next logical step for them? And there's so much more to posting. You have to have skills in joint ventures, collaborations and networking because big money can be made from that part. Remember I spoke about it earlier, I said prospecting. You cannot leave that part out. So many people are growing their profiles and getting so many more followers and likes just because of joint ventures and collaborations they're doing online. So here's an example. This is Daryl. Some of you might know him. Uh, Daryl owns two businesses um, and he gets up at 4 a.m. every day and runs a half marathon almost every single day, plus runs two businesses. He hardly does paid advertising anymore just because of the strategies that we've done with both businesses organically. Um, he picked up four new distributors. So when people say to you, oh, yeah, um, B2B, you can't do B2B with Facebook. What a load of hoot. Of course, you can do B2B with Facebook. Business to business owners are still out there on Facebook. So um, this was just one of the sessions that we had and I wrote it all down. I was like, you got a $30,000 product order, nine cartons. So I'm not talking about single sales here. I'm talking about big sales. I'm talking about collaborations. I'm talking about... Um, a lot of successful opportunities, which is certainly worth the 20 minutes he spends each day on each business. So he would be spending 40 minutes a day on social media generating these kind of results for free. Okay, so the last one is systems. And this one's really important. I probably added this one in a couple of years back now. Um, because when you have structure and systems in place, which Greg obviously is a big advocate for, we know that we have flow in our business, okay, which takes away a lot of the stress and the overwhelm. So if we can automate things, it means we can get back a lot of our time. And if we can have an easy routine where we only have to spend 20 minutes a day on our client generation on social media, because we've actually automated our emails and our nurture sequences and our retargeting, and we've automated all those processes and they just happen, okay? You'll get back your life. Um, and it certainly feels like a habit or a routine, which is really easy to do when you get up every day and do it. So time management is really important. I cannot say that enough. You really should have time in your diary for your marketing and for your client generation. And if you do, well, you can't complain when you're not getting more clients if you're not spending time on working on the business marketing. Um, and this is really huge, but if you remove time-wasting activity, which includes negative thoughts, that can certainly help you um, with your systems and your processes. So, for example, cleaning up your emails, unsubscribing to things that you don't need, um, getting rid of software you don't use, things like that, that can actually create more time and space in your life. So again, um, I actually went and got a whole bunch of testimonials from the trades industry here, just a couple of ones, just talking about, this one's actually fairly new, Kerry Ann Smith, we just got this result recently. Uh, we, we did her first ever end of year, end of year financial sale um, email, and she did 6.6 thousand in sales, just off an email. Um, the one at the bottom is a $20,000 job, uh, which is a body corporate job that was created through Facebook. Um, so again, just a couple of testimonials there from, from people in the industry who are getting results for free using social media. So successful selling starts with you. At the end of the day, check that your head's in the right place because if you don't believe, you don't receive. Um, and you can make sales online smarter and not harder. Anything new is challenging. Once you overcome that challenge, there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So do you believe in your business? Do you believe in the success of your business? Do you believe that you can have a productive and profitable business? Um, I love those two P words. Those two P words just rock. Because this is how my dream day looks like. That's my partner, my dog, beach, bar and bay on bicycles. That is how it looks to me. And it's really awesome knowing that I'm still generating clients as it happens. And fast forward to now from poor broke Chantel in a new country. Uh, two years ago, I was able to buy my first property after honestly being on the bones of my ass. I've just uh, been fortunate enough to be able to support my twin daughters to get a car. 
um, as well. Um, and last year, I converted my business into a um, into a company. And again, this scale, this level is from someone who's me, who's non-techy, non-business orientated, uh, who hates being online, uh, and was able to create this without paying, paying for advertising or outsourcing. But by investing in myself and still being able to uh, do this sort of stuff. This is Aquasplash. So what does a business on autopilot like for you? Um, because a business on autopilot for me means I can spend more time with my family and I can make more money and I can play more. And that's really important for me. So you can certainly make sales from your socials. And I hope that I've proven that from you today. But more importantly, you can create a rewarding lifestyle off and online. And for me, creating that rewarding lifestyle offline is, is, is so important. And that means I've got to get that online stuff right. So that's me, online business strategist. Uh, with my website, chantelgerardi.com.au. Um, and as I said, if you're happy to share your email address with me, I'm happy to share those resources with you, a couple of checklists and resources. But if you do go to chantelgerardi.com.au and um, there should be a little pop-up. I think it pops up after about 30 seconds on the front page and it says download hot leads on repeat. If you download that, it sends you a 20 plus page resource on traffic sources for free online client generating strategies, all right? And I'll tell you that that's a lead magnet, which everyone should have. And from that, it takes you into a nurture sequence, which will introduce me, tell you a little bit about my story, show some of my successes, and then it offers people the option to then book a call with me. So literally, I've just told you my entire funnel um, because I give it all away for you. Um, and this is the type of strategies and things that I help business owners um, come up for themselves. Uh, from there, you will then be in my email newsletters as well, which means you'll get my free weekly training and blog and video that I send out, um, as well as grants, if there's any business grants that are available, uh, and any other weird things that are happening on social media that I think you need to know about. And that's me, Chantel Girardi, online business strategist. Did I get it all in? Did I get it all in? <laughs> Okay, awesome. Greg uh, has said that he will send me your email addresses. I will. Didn't I tell you that what Chantel doesn't know about social media is not worth knowing? Well, after all of that, we don't know what we don't know that we should know, and there is nothing. Seriously, <laughs> there is nothing about social. So um, I will um, share everyone's email who is attended tonight amongst each yeah. other. And then um, if anyone's unhappy with that, tell me right now, um, but I'm, I'm sure you won't be. Um, and then you can individually make contact, um, et cetera, et cetera. So Chantel, thank you. Um, absolutely fantastic. Um, and we'll can the recording. Yeah.